You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Hey there. It's Joe List here, and it's Mark Norman over there. Nice. A lot of people wouldn't have gone for that. You would have said here, a lot of people, but not you, buddy boy. Oh, I'm over there. I know why. Because we have a website on Squarespace. That's yeah. probably why. Yes, Squarespace.com. If you're going to make a website, Mark, where's the place to do it? Got to go to Squarespace.com. It's easy, breezy. Japanesey. They got the click and drop. What's it called? Drag and drop. Drag and drop. Everybody loves a dragging and dropping. That was the dragon. And then, boop. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, seriously though, there, folks, this is a great website, great place to make your website. Tuesdayswithstories.com is on Squarespace. Everybody I know has a website on Squarespace. Oh yeah. You got to go in there. You go and you use the, uh, the the code promo code Tuesdays. Tuesdays, and you get a nice fat discount. It's a great price. It's affordable and it's easy to use. Even a dum dum can use this. Yeah, like us. We're dumb and that's dumb and we're dum dums. And we're young and full of crumbs. Oh, a lot of crumbs all over me. I just had a croissant and it was stale, so it crumbed all over. So check it out, Squarespace. If you're looking to start a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Tuesdays. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is fitting at me. Oh, man, oh, man. We are back, baby. Tuesdays avec Stories. That was a little French. Oh, say, is that how you say? Oh, that's how you wow. say with in French. You know a little French, do you? I do. I, I took French immersion until third grade. Oh, wow. And I pulled out because I wanted to be an American. Aha. Uh -huh. It's very different culture. Very fruity. Here's what I just started doing. Eating croissants a lot. Oh, very flaky. Very unhealthy. They are. They're buttery. Buttery and bready, I guess, but I can't stop. I, I Really, it, it's not a joke. Or, I, it, I'm an addict. I have a croissant. I love it. What? I have to eat it four times. A, I'm eating four croissants a day. Wow, what a I, strange addiction. I can't stop. Anything that is pleasurable to me, I'm just like, I'm going to do that every day. So you do have that personality. Masturbating, croissants, and soda, booze, whatever it is. I wow. got to do stand-up is the same thing. Yeah, I have it with stand-up, but croissants, of all things. I, I, I'm thinking about a croissant right now. I had one on the way here. What? No, but I guess it's better than a chocolate chip. I think it's better, but we had this argument at LOL one night, whether or not, because it's sugar and it's carby and it mm. clogs your asshole, I think. But I think it's better than a cookie. I think so. Well, it's sugar-wise, anyway. But that's a lot of sugar, too. It's refined. Uh. I don't know how any of it works. I don't understand it. What the fuck are we supposed to eat? Ah, jeez, you gotta eat. You can't even eat fruit now. I got yelled at about fruit. Yeah, fruit. Oh, it's sugar. Yeah. Everyone's obsessed with the sugar. But you're telling me, I'm gonna quote my friend Paul Odo here. He's like, these people with the uh, what's the diet called? The caveman paleo. Paleo. He's like, you're trying to tell me that a piece of bacon is better for me than grapes? That's insane. It just seems wild to me. Yeah. Well, you gotta eat the meat, no carbs. Fuck you. I, I'm thin. I feel great. Can I go out on a limb? That might, this might get the, the lights shut off. I prefer you on a limb. I love a limb. I don't like you at the bark. No, yeah. the, the trunk is what I meant to the say. The trunk the bark? The bark is on the trunk. I guess, yeah. Bark is on the trunk would be a good name for this episode. I usually hang out on the roots. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I'm on a limb night. I'm on a limb tonight, baby. I'm, I'm tying myself to the limb just in case I fall. All right. But uh, I'm not a huge bacon guy. I want to blow you. I want to oh, pause the show, boy. come over and make out with you Thank until you. your nose bleeds. Uh, everything. Add bacon. Boy, you put bacon in, it makes it better. Bacon's the pixie dust the food. Bacos. Bacon. Bring home the bacon. Bacon fried in the pan. Sizzling bacon. Bacon, bacon bits. Bacon. bacon bits. The dog. Bacon! I've never had a bit about bacon in my life. Fuck bacon. It's okay. It's I don't good. Even, I don't, I'll, go on a, I'll go on a limb. I'm going to pass you on the limb. I'm going to step around. Oh, boy. Throw me the tie. I don't want to fall off. All right. It's getting thin on uh, that limb. Right. <laughs> I fucking hate bacon. Whoa, it cracked. Oh, boy. Well, come I'm on, on you the way it? down. You hate bacon? I don't care for it. I don't I don't care for it either. But you not liking it skipped me right into hate. It's so nice because everybody's so, so fucking obsessed with bacon. I Well, here's the thing. I didn't eat ba I did I, I didn't try a lot of foods. I'm a very picky eater. I'm a douche, whatever. I'm gay. I come, I finally ate bacon by the time I had it. I didn't want to add more things that are bad for me. I already eat enough with the sure. croissants and the cookies and the pussy. 
Uh, what well, you can get throat cancer from? I heard. That's true. I heard. It, I heard it right here first. Oh yeah. I don't have it though. I'm all cleared up. Uh, but anyways, the bacon. I had it. And I was like, this is okay. It's just whatever. Mm-hmm. People talk about it like you said, like it's the second coming of chicken. Yeah, it's insane. And and people order a side of bacon. Mm-hmm. Look at you know, or a bacon B a BLT. You're telling me bacon, lettuce, and tomato. That's all you want? I don't count that as meat. No. I need a meat. I don't, I'm, I'm not a big pork guy in general. Pig. Yeah. Any of the pig meat, I don't really care for. What about the the barbecue? The pulled pork, all that, the ribs? I'm not way into that. I, okay. I like a rib. I like a rib. I like a pulled pork. Yeah. But I'm not, it's not, I'm not huge into it. I just grew up on cheeseburgers and steak, and right. I like a red meat. Uh, I, like a, I like a pork chop. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, bacon... It's so crispy and it's so slimy and greasy. Yeah, it's just it's overrated. Yeah, not a fan. You heard it here first, folks. Oh boy, the phones are lighting up. <laughs> I know this smoke coming from the phones. There's a lot of fatties out there. But this leads in right into my first uh, story of the day. All right. The uh, the other day, uh, our friend uh, Nick DiPaolo oh, invites yeah. me up to uh, come watch the football I opening. Saw the, saw the photo. Op- yeah, opening opening Sunday. We're a little off here. This is we're two weeks away. Whatever happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully the Patriots are one and one right now as you're listening to this. Or no, it'd have to be two and one. I don't mm. know when this comes out. Yeah. It comes out in November. Anyways, uh, we go up there and, uh, Jason Cantor, he invites, uh, my roommate Cantor. He says to Cantor, bring chicks. So Cantor takes it literally. He invites a girl. He's dating like, you know, nine girls right now. These websites are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. The you can just date and fuck everybody. I know. My girlfriend was like, do you think if you were single, you'd use these websites? I'm like, I don't know. Meanwhile, I'm like, what are you, hi? I'm going to use them now, as is. I'm not using them. Oh, well, you're, you're good, and you're handsome, and you're outgoing. Wow. I'm a nervous wreck. I mean, the outgoing is all an act, but I've, I've perfected it. Right. All right, so you're out. You're up in Westchester. So I get Canner brings a girl. He's been on, like, three dates with this girl. He barely knows her. You know oh, what that's I mean? bad news. So he brings her, and uh, Sarah, my girlfriend, can't come. He's like, what are you talking about? I thought Sarah was coming. We were double dating. I'm like, nah, she's, she's working. So me and Canner and this girl drive up. Oh. I'm just meeting her. Oh, my God. They haven't even hooked up before. Oh, my God. It's like a third, third date. They've yeah. met twice or whatever. They made out once. So we drive up there. It's uh, me, her, and Nick. She meets Nick, who's a bit abrasive and brash. <laughs> oh, a bit. At times. And he makes all these burgers and this pasta sauce. And it's just, is there any other guests? Artie Lang. Oh, hey. And uh, Joe Matarese. Oh, all right. Fun. They so we got a real gang of nut jobs. Good group. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here to watch football. It's not a barbecue. It's not a party. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, Matarese, Artie, Nick, me, Cantor. Five comics, men. And this one girl who's just meeting these people. I mean, it's kind of cool because Artie's like a celebrity, so I'm sure she knows him, so that's yeah. exciting. But we're there specifically to watch football. Right. And there's just all this misogyny and, and, and race stuff right, happening. Right. And we're very irreverent humor. Sure. You know, we don't give a shit. And no one's going to clean it up for one girl. No. So it's just fucking wild stuff happening. And it's all this inside jokes right she doesn't even like foot she hates football oh wow so nick makes his his pasta sauce and a million burgers and pork and these these things and sausages it's a whole to do yes and uh he's like i made this pasta for you i know you love it and this girl she starts eating the pasta and i'm eating the pasta and i'm like this is so fucking delicious i don't know how you do it and he's like well it's a big thing i put in tomatoes and i put in a little olive oil and then you get this pork and you grind the pork down and it's amazing she just turns white. Oh. Puts the fork down. Oh, boy. Vegetarian. Oh, my God. 20 years. Oh. She hasn't wow. eaten meat in 20 years, this girl. This is wild. And immediately, Canner just bursts out laughing. He's dying laughing. He's supposed to be like her guy. Sure, the consoler. He's like, bah! And she, she's just mad. And Nick's like, oh, my God. He's like, what's going to happen? Are you going to die? And. I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. All I'm thinking about is, you know, I'm sober. Yeah. If I was drinking some juice and someone's like, by the way, there's tequila in there, You'd be I'd furious. be livid. I yeah. mean, I would be so upset. And uh, she's just, she took it pretty well. Yeah. But man, it was like, oh my, I was like, I'm so sorry. Cantor's on the ground laughing and Nick's laughing. Then Artie comes like a half an hour later. Oh boy. So like three hours later, we're talking. Oh, someone makes a girl. reference to it. And Artie's like, what's, what's this about? And she's like, oh, yeah, she had meat. And he's like, what? When's the last time you had it? She's like, 20 years ago, Artie loses it. He's like, ah! <laughs> And he has that, like, weird smoker's yeah, crazy laugh, yeah. which adds to it, because he's like, ah! Right. Ah! Oh, and she's just sitting man. there, and like, now we're all laughing at how hard Artie's laughing. This and this poor, poor girl is chick. just, 
It's brutal. Oh my god. She's just eating pork. She's eating a bowl of pork. She's already let's let's go through. She's in a terrible situation with mm-hmm. she's with a guy, Jason Cantor, who he's no peach. He's no peach. He can be a peach. He can be a peach, but I don't think with ladies he's too much of a peach. <laughs> he's not always a peach. You, she brings her up, what, an hour drive up? Hour drive. Hour yep. drive to people no one she knows, these forty something year old uh whack jobs, right. comedians. Uh doesn't know anybody watching football, something she hates, and then she eats something she hasn't eaten in 20 years, and she's against, and then everyone laughs in her face. Right. And Brutal. Plus, so I did mean, you rape her? But, I mean, how bad but, did it get? You know, she's like a 30-year-old girl. She works for Esquire, I think. She uh, lives in Williamsburg. And, and so, you know, nobody, this is no secret. In private, a bunch of guys watching football, there's a lot of misogynistic sure. stuff happening. Look at this fucking, yeah. someone drops a pass, this fucking faggot. Where'd you learn how to catch? In right. the kitchen, you fucking right. black you faggot, joke, black whatever. Joke, black joke. Yeah, a lot of race stuff. And right. she's just cringing. Uh-huh. And uh, again, and football games are four hours long. Right. And then uh, fi- we take a break at halftime. We're like, let's go throw the ball around. We're whipping the football around. She's like, I don't really play football. She's oh, like, I don't know. Oh, my God. She's just sitting on a stump, like, just Horrible. Just a brutal this day. Poor girl. I mean, I would have just, I would have had, like, been massaging her. I would have felt so bad. Right. Yeah. It was just, I felt bad and I kept being like, are you all right? And I don't know what to say, but. Crazy, crazy thought. Let me run this by you. Please. What if she wrote an article about it? Wouldn't that be something? Ooh. You know, was... like, she could be a spy for Jezebel or something. Like, that's the, that's the lion's den. DePaulo, Artie. Oh, yeah. Football. That's wild. She could be. The nice thing about that, Eric, I don't think I'd be mentioned in there. Uh Uh-huh. Because you got Artie and and Nick. That's a good uh, point. And I was the guy that was like, are you all right? I'm so sorry. Right, right. And I was cringing every time. Although I probably, you know, threw in a few jabs of my own. I can't remember. I would love to have a conversation. I'd love to have her on the show. Maybe we could get her on the show. How great would that be? Yeah. Yeah, she's a bit pretentious. No, I'm joking. She's not. She was fine. I'm kidding. She might listen. Wow. She's a fan of Gondelman, so maybe she knows us. Oh, all right. Yeah. But Gondelman, uh, he's the opposite of DePaulo. Yes, he really is. Well, he's funny, and he's well, nice, sure. and he's from Boston. He's, so there's some, there's some, some, but there's some similarities. He's a nice Jew who's incredibly uh, progressive and right. liberal. Mm-hmm. And he got me on TV once mm. uh, as a giant bean. That's true. Flicking the bean, baby. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> wow, that's you a wild any, story. Uh, you ever have any uh, run-ins with vegetarians eating meat by accident? Uh, or drinking by accident? Alcoholics? Oh, man. I, it's maybe. pretty rare, but it it's happens. It's pretty rare. It does happen. But it's, it's almost, it almost happens more on TV or movies where you're like, ah, uh, it's like a plot of someone. Eat. Plus, you, that can fuck you up. You don't eat meat for 20 oh, years. Yeah. You eat a piece of pork. You sure. get pretty sick, I think. I, uh, first of all, how was the ride back? Was it weird? It was a little awkward. I mean, it just like I, I didn't, and I don't want to fuck up Cannon and Cockblock by being like, "This is the worst day of your life, sure. isn't it?" But um, he said they ended up, uh, you know, hooking. I don't want to speak out of Still? turn or whatever. Yeah, I think, I think it was. It went all right. I think they're okay. He's got to marry this chick. I mean, that's a great uh, like. How'd you how'd you get to know each other? Story. He's another. We talked about this last week. He's another one of these guys that is just really handsome. Ladies love him. He's got those eyes. He's got nice eyes. And uh, but he's bald. He's Jewish. He's short. But, but he he does have a way. Have you talked to him? If you notice, he has a, a like a kind of a shit eating grin. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a good look. He's got a nice smile and yeah. he's got uh, mysterious eyes. Yes. So he's he's also in great shape. Oh, is he? And he's just a he's just a wonderful yeah, guy. I like in him in general. <laughs> <laughs> that was like Kramer talking about Jerry. The only thing I've seen with the with the breaking of a uh, sobriety was uh, I'm not going to say who, but a comedian I was with who's been sober for years, and everybody knows that guy's got it. He's like the Wolf Man. He starts drinking, it's all over. <laughs> well, and uh, maybe Wolf I gave, Man was too specific. Maybe I gave it away. <laughs> but uh, we were at a comedy festival, and I caught him behind a bar, just chugging beers. Like he had like six plastic cups and just chugging them one by one. Oh, and boy. I was like, well, there goes the neighborhood. Oh, and uh, I was staying in his room that night. Oh, boy. And uh, oof. It all came out. Oh, boy. It was bad. I mean, he just told me everything. He wouldn't let me go to sleep. He just kept talking, and he we, he made a pass at me. Oh, wow. It was, it was wild. Yikes. Yeah. I love the term, make a pass. Yeah. I'll always laugh at make a pass at me. Well, he made a pass. Um, <laughs> I was making a pass at the football guy. I don't know what the fuck. I saw uh, the photo. That was a good pick. Um, I uh, fell off. I had a guy fall off the wagon with me when I was still drinking. Mm. Another comic whose name we won't say, but he hadn't had a drink in a year and a half. And we did a show together in the East Village, and I was walking to Canner's Bar. He's a, he was bartending at the time. Uh-huh. And I was walking over there, and I was like, hey, we're, I'm going to go to this bar, so I'll see you later. And he's like, well, I'll just come with you. And I was like, you're going to come in the bar with me? And he's oh, like, wow. yeah. And I was like, all right. 
And then we sat down. And I was like, I'll have a shot and a beer. And he's like, me too. And then Cannon's like, just laughed at him. He's like, no, I'll have one too. And so Cannon's like, are you fucking serious? And he's like, yeah, lay it on me. Hmm. So I had this weird guilt. I'm just drinking with this guy. And he's been drinking ever since. Now I'm sober and he's still drinking. Whoa. But at the time, I didn't, I didn't, you know, now I'd be more sensitive. And I'm like, no, 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 you're not. You can't. What mm-hmm. the fuck? But at the time, I was like, all right, great. Wow. Let's get it going. Yeesh. It feels, I mean, it feels kind of good to you because you you, you feel like you're, you're so fun that you broke this guy. Right. You know? But meanwhile, there's a lot more oh, going on underneath more. the uh it's kind of like surface. it's a lot like if you uh, if you if you're gay and you turn a straight guy, you get a straight guy to hook up with you. Yes, I'm sure that feels good too. Of course, like, you almost did it, or he almost did it. He almost did it, but yeah. I, uh, I I put the kibosh. You were strong, man. Yeah, I did not give him that uh, shot. Oh boy, the closest I've ever come to being gay, I think that Bailey J. You know about her? Oh, she's hot. <laughs> she's like a hot chick with a penis. Yeah, that's gay, right? Did you? Dabble? Well, not close, but I looked at it and I was like, wow, I think I would have sex with that person. Yeah, yeah. That's the cl- I mean, it was 30 feet away, and it was just a thought. And, oh, yeah. but uh, She's hot, yeah. I uh, I got jerked off by a guy one stroke. Oh, I think I heard that story. Yeah, I uh, I was on a party bus. Mm-hmm. We were, they were big back then. We were the real kings of high school. Let me just say that. Party bus in high school? Yes. Wow. We were wild. We got a, That's rare. It was packed, except we had one seat reserved for the keg. The keg had a seat. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're on the party bus. It's just wild, getting crazy into the night. And I'm getting a BJ by a gal, you know, sophomore in high school, getting a BJ in one of the back seats. Uh-huh. My friend comes up and he goes, oh, my God. He's, like, walking in the aisle. And the girl, her head pops up. And she's like, what, what? And so my cock is exposed. And he just gave it, like, a whoop, whoop, up and down. Wow. And uh, I was like, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, I don't know. Oh, and wow. And he walked away. Oh, jeez. And she commenced blowing me. Was he trying to be funny? Maybe he's trying to be funny he's to be carried funny. away. Yeah, he got yeah. way too carried away. He's like, let's see how far I can go. Right, right. Like, oh, that was too far. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, I've never had another man's hand on my... Well, maybe a doctor. Oh, yeah. But he had gloves on, so it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think. This guy had a catcher's mitt. Uh-huh. I don't know why. <laughs> Interesting. How about I, this one? Well, this is going to really stir things up here please. at the podcast. More and than a hand job. You and I, we uh, we talk about race from time to time. We dabble in the race game. And, yeah, uh, the Samoans. Uh... It's fascinating to us. Well, here's one that this is going to really... And I, I purposely didn't talk to you about it because I want your oh. on-air reaction. Oh, I'm going to get mad, aren't I? You're probably going to get upset. I don't know where it's going to go. That's All the right. fun thing about podcasts. You never know where it's going to go. That's true. We could be in Kentucky in a second. Yeah. We could be in uh, Manitoba. Woo! We could be there right now. Shout out to Chris Brinklow. We love you. Who? You know that guy? Apparently I don't even not. know if he listens to this podcast. <laughs> he's a Canadian. He's a sweetheart of a man. He listens to the You Know What Dude podcast. Ah. I think he listens to this one, too. He's a sweetheart of Let's a man. Hope so. Great guy. Well, it's going to be weird if he doesn't. Yes. No, won't. no one will even know. Well, maybe somebody will go, hey, Brinky, <laughs> turn on the radio. Hey, let's get Brink high, Brink low. Yeah. All right, so I'm walking over to LOL, which oh, comes up a lot. I'm you, bracing myself. You get a lot of stories from LOL because it's the worst place on earth. It's a trash heap. <laughs> it's a shit club, <laughs> and everybody knows it. It's the worst club in the city. <laughs> now it's really bad. Oh, yeah. It's gotten worse. <laughs> it was trash heap. It's hell. Trash heap. It's dog shit. You can do this for 20 more minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. So I'm walking over there. They have a dreaded street team. Which yes. is, if you're not familiar, if you come to New York, there's a bunch of maniacs. And I'm grateful for them. It's a weird thing. It's weird. Because they get... <laughs> they get people to the clubs. And without them, you know, we don't have people at the clubs. Yes. But, but they're lying to the people. My, oh, they're duping everybody. They're duping. <laughs> And then whip out of the dupe. Yeah. They're on the show. We're right. at the show. We've got to entertain these people that have been duped. Right. And they were told that Chris Rock is going to be there. And they sure. were told that they're shooting a special. And it's a whole thing. And, uh, and he, <laughs> Mark's reaching for the water. I thought he was going to steal my nose. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> so anyways, I'm walking. And these people, a lot of them are just fucking assholes yeah. that they get paid for every person they get in. So they'll say anything sure. to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. They'll just make up any lie yeah. to get him into the show, and they don't care. Now we have to deal with it. Yes. These people were told that Chris Rock is going to be there. Now they're in a warehouse watching, you know, whatever shit comic tell dick jokes and ask them if they've ever been fucked in the ass. Right. So uh, those are all quotes, by the way. Oh, yeah. 
That's so I'm walking up, and uh, I see one of these guys. He's holding a show that says Comedy Central Showcase, oh. which is a lie. Oh, my God. And he goes, hi. He's a young black male. Mm-hmm. And he go, and he watches this, these two, this couple walk. He goes, hi, would you like to check out a comedy show? And they go, no, thank you. And he goes, why? Is it because the young black nigger has manners? Wow. That's now a, I'm that's pissed. A, that's a quote, and that's his pitch. Wow. He's trying to guilt them in. And and pardon me, don't get upset about the language. I'm, I I got to quote this guy. Yeah, yeah. Are you uh, I'm, I'm, are you I'm saying in... no to me because I'm a young black nigger with manners? I'm enraged. Uh, unbelievable! What an I, idiot! I turned around, I just stared at him, and he goes, "That's right." To me, he wasn't even talking to me. He was talking to them, but I gave him a glare. I'm like, "What is wrong with you?" Oh my god! And he goes, "That's right." To me, I'm on the show. He doesn't yes. even know. Yes. So he's just trying to. St- I don't even. This guy. I'm enthralled and so on. I'm livid. I don't. I don't even know what you do. I don't know what to, uh, mixed emotions. Th- that's the problem with this this kind of shit because you can't do anything and it, this behavior is allowed to continue. Right. Because you can't. If you say anything, you're pegged to racist. You're pegged to whatever. And they just maybe they had a sh- uh, dinner plan. Maybe they were going to a Broadway show, but now it's a racial thing. Now they have. You're giving white guilt. You're preying on that. It's- also, how about just having manners? Who cares what color you are? You right. should have manners anyway. Also, just uh, that the term, uh, I don't feel like saying it anymore. Right, but, right, right, uh, right, right, right. But to put black in front of that and to, to hit the R, of course, and now you're putting that on them. Right, now right, you're, right. you're making these the two worst people. Yes, it, yes. It's like, I hate when comics do this. Uh, so some black comics will do this, too, and they'll, they'll walk them and go, you guys are looking at me like, make me laugh. Uh, I'm going to stop saying the N-word because I'm, I'm uncomfortable at this point. Right, but right. But we they'll say, are. make me laugh, N-word. And I'm like, what? no one's thinking that. Yeah. Nobody's saying that. You're right. now making the audience. Yes. Now there's a hundred people here that have, that feel awkward, and, and no, you're you're putting this on people that the audience are sitting there going like this. All right, make me laugh, and we're, nobody's yeah. thinking that. No. Nobody's saying that. You've never experienced that. Yes. Maybe you have. I don't know your personal story. Well, you're not playing in 1950s Alabama. Right. Okay. You're at the Comedy Cellar in 2014. Shut up. Yeah. Everyone's just going like this. Oh, here's another comedian. Yeah. Let's hear this comedy. What's he all about? Sometimes I think this race stuff is perpetu- And Don't get me wrong. This horrible of, racist of white course. people and sure. it's millions of them. And, and, right. And some of the people at the very top of the government are racist and purposefully holding people down. But I don't think they get is not enough flack. I don't think the, the anger is is put in the right spots. Right. These are just two nice, kind people walking around, and now they have to deal with this. Yeah. They well, have to hear th- that language is even is offensive. Yeah, yeah. We don't need that. What are you doing? Tell jokes. And you're a bad comic. You have to use that because the N word. It's it's like the it's like fuck times ten. Right. You, know, you use fuck to get a laugh. You use the N-word to get an even bigger laugh. Right. But now, now let me throw this out there, and this is a lofty one, so hang tight, oh boy. folks. This isn't even a limb. It's a loft. I'm on a loft now. I'm, I'm paying rent. All right. Uh, so you, said, you mentioned there's white guys who are racist. There's people in the government. There's big, big fat cats in Washington and all that shit. Of course. Huge. And, yes, that's obvious. And there's police, racist police, whatever. You gotta, a lot of powerful white guys. So... Black people are going, hey, you're, you're just generalizing. You're like, you guys are in the crowd are all white. There's some racist white people out there. You're probably all racist. That's just as bad as saying, hey, this black guy mugged me in 88. You're all criminals. Right. It's just one big sweeping generalization. And just because, you know, being called a criminal is terrible, but being called a racist is terrible. You can get fired for being a criminal. You can get fired for being a racist. Yeah. So why is one okay and one not okay? It's a it's a it's a shitty thing to be called and to be accused of, uh, particularly when you're just walking around New York City. Yeah. You're just yeah. walking, and someone goes, "Hey," and they said, "No thanks." Hey, you want to see a comedy show? No thanks. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because I'm black. Because I'm a I'm an N word. Yeah. No. Fuck you. Well, the manners thing is really what pisses me off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just, they, they both piss me off, but yeah. I don't even know how to get into it or what to do about no, it. But no, I mean, it, Leo Allen has that great joke where a guy is like hawking CDs. He goes, "Hey, check out my rap album. Check out my rap album." And Leo Allen goes, "No, I'm good." And the guy goes, "What? You don't like black people?" Right. And Leo Allen goes, "No, I don't like homemade rap." <laughs> and it's like it's a great joke, and it's it's such a good point too. It's like, what does race have to do with it, you idiot? Right. I hate that. But it shows the thing about white guilt because people it must work. 
If they're doing it, I, I mean, people are like, I'm sorry, man. Maybe I'll go to the comedy show. I'm sorry that you, I offended you. I mean, that guy should be uh, beaten in the streets. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't care for that guy. No, no, just, a, just an asshole. And there's no reasoning. Like, if you went up to him, you're like, dude, what, what? This is your way of selling tickets. Like, how about you be a little more jovial and polite? And he would, he would go nuts. It's like, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. And what? That's what. Ah. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, and again, I, I offer no solution. I don't know. I don't know the answer. What? And uh, I'll admit to my naivete in the race department. Not in this guy. This guy's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, He's yeah. a fucking asshole. Right. But a lot of the race stuff, I'm like, man, this, this race, it must suck to be black. I have no idea. Sure, It of must course. suck, and it's easy for me to, we can talk about it for 20 minutes, and then I can just move on and not have to worry about it again. Right, right, That's right. what I was saying about Ferguson. I can just go, well, I don't have any answers, right. and uh, I'll just put this out of my mind until it's over. It go doesn't affect me, life. really. Yeah. Uh, and it must suck to be Black, I mean, there's the, the the racism, the cops, the the policies, the and profiling, the profile. Yeah. It's a it seems like a nightmare to me. Right. But uh, this is not helping. The, no, nothing is making no. you talk like that and act like that. But that's I, not because of someone holding you back or holding right, you down. Right. You're just a fucking asshole. You're a dick, and you're using this card, which is terrible, and it's holding you back more. But I think. Obviously, our black listeners, any sane listener, white or black, hates this guy. I'm oh, sure he's a fucking asshole, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's black people right now listening going, yeah, that guy sucks, I hate him too. Of course. I mean, anyone yeah. that's going to defend that guy, I don't want you listening to my fucking right, show. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that's a piece of shit thing to say and do. Also, that that language, I, that word, I really don't like. It's, it's a harsh yeah, word you hear, right. and you're like, ah, Jesus, what is wrong with you, man? I saw a comic on stage in Chicago, actually, black guy. Funny comic, I can't remember his name. But uh, he had a whole thing about, he's like... We got rid of the R word. You, know, you can't say retard. We get we get rid of all these words. You can't say cunt. You can't say retard. How about getting rid of nigger, motherfucker? Where's that? Where's that fucking campaign? It's like you're the one saying it. Oh you're, yeah. It's the rap guys. It's the black comics. I mean, white guys aren't even allowed to say it. You know, like I mean, maybe they'll say it at a barbecue in Kentucky right. or whatever. But you're the one using it. You're I, using it in that joke. I will say this. I mean, this this goes into private and in, and in, in the white community, private white conversations and. I don't hear the N-word from white people at all. No. Very much. I mean, not uh, really. I'll say to quote things, that's because I'm an adult. Right, I'm right. not going to quote a person and, and change what they said. This is what the guy said, and then, um, that's the story I'm telling. Yeah. But I'll hang out with, you know, five white people. There's not no one secretly going like, ah, oh, these fucking N-words. Yeah. Gonna, it, it doesn't happen. Every time I hear the N-word a thousand times a week. And 989 times it's from a white, I mean, from a black person. Or a Puerto Rican. Yeah, or Puerto Ricans, or Asians even. Or Asians Indian even. people are saying it. Yeah. It's insane. It's insane. You're on the train, it's just, it's just three people that aren't black being like, nigga, please, nigga, motherfucker. Right, like, what right. the fuck is going on here? I know, I it's know. It's an epidemic. Just stop saying it. Yeah. And uh, then, the, but then a white guy says it, it's a press conference. And then oh, I, my God. And then insane. I go, why, why? And they go, because white people have power. And that's my problem is I forget. I don't see white people as this powerful group because I'm white and I have no power. That's where we're probably naive a little that's bit. That's where we're naive, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But that's my own thing. But yeah, I mean, that that's why that joke pissed me off because I'm like, look, you're the one saying in that joke, it's in every rap song, it's in every black movie, you know. Right. And there's quite a campaign to get rid of the N-word. <laughs> yeah. We try I mean, to bury people, it. People are getting arrested and thrown out and fired and it's insane. Right, right. But, so, uh, I don't know. I just, I hated that no, fucking guy. That's, Again, I, that's I, I, wild. Don't, I don't have any answers. People are going to be like, well, well, don't look for me for answers and don't yell at me if this sounds great. And I'll admit my naivete on guns and race and, uh, fucking, what do you call that? Status, economy, and war. I have nothing. I'm just telling Social, you my ideal. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. a real idealist here, but I, I had this, and this is very idealist too. I hate this guy. Now, now the fact this guy is out there using that is really bugging me. You know how to end racism? Here's how to end racism. Everybody stop being assholes. That's right, where racism comes right, from. Yeah. Is people acting like assholes. That's it. You got you you got thirty black guys walking in front of the street and being like, fuck you, motherfucker. You're like, this guy's an asshole. Yeah. Black people are assholes. There you go. And then you get white people fucking being like, We gotta kill these N words right. or fucking KKK. Or they're like, We gotta hold down these people, we gotta arrest these fucking people. Right. They're acting like assholes. We gotta get rid of these people. They yeah. are assholes. White people are assholes. They're there fucking enslaving, they're racist. Yeah. Or uh, whatever. Whatever Indian or fucking Middle Eastern people are blowing each other up, ah, we, they're assholes. They're assholes. And then you go, but I'm Indian, I'm fine. Well, they're assholes, so now you're an asshole. That's how people work. That's by the, it. By the way, I started trying to think of an Indian stereotype. I couldn't think of one. Then I switched to Middle Eastern. I know Indian people aren't really known for blowing people up. That's oh, more, that's uh, kind of their terrorist thing. I not, mean, if, Not India, though. I think more Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, well, and Syria. And I mean, all I hate to people. say it, but you, you've got that brown look. 
Oh boy, that's where I mean that's what it is. I think people people aren't sitting there going, "What country are you from?" Okay, now that I know, fuck you. Right, it's more Middle Eastern thing. Middle Eastern, there you go. So, anyways, uh, people. People, most racism comes from people acting like assholes. Right. Cops, don't be assholes. Any group. Yeah. Any group. I, Italian, whatever. I'm guilty of it myself. You know, we talked about it last week, a couple weeks ago. I went on this crazy gun rant, and that's that's me doing the same thing. I'm like, these gun owners are fucking asshole, faggot pieces of shit. Yeah. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just as guilty. So. And a lot of it, too, is uh, people need to take uh, responsibility for their own shit. Like, look within every now and then. Because a lot of people just want to go, fuck you, fuck you, instead of going, oh, fuck me. Sometimes right. it's fuck me. You need to hear that. Like, of course. Here's an example. I was in Indianapolis. Uh, the I was in a hotel. The feature drives and picks me up every day, and we go to the club. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, we're driving. We're at a red light. There's a guy in front of us. He doesn't go. The light turns green. Doesn't go. I guess he's texting or something. Uh -huh. So the guy behind us, behind us, honks. So then the guy in front of us thinks we honked. So he pulls up next to it. He goes, "Fuck you," and gives us the finger. Oh wow. So my the, the feature guy was a bit of a hothead. So the next red light, he goes up to him and goes, hey, buddy, I didn't even honk. And the guy goes, who gives a shit? Fuck you again. And it's like, that's the problem. Uh -huh. Instead of going, oh, shit, my bad. He goes, ah, fuck you, whatever. So my my feature guy just threw a lemonade at him. Like he had a, like a, <laughs> like a, like a, like a, a fountain drink and just threw it at him. Wow. And the guys were like, ah, and they drove away. And it's like, well, you, you're punished because he tried to, to settle it civilly and you just wouldn't have it right just because some other i mean that's insane behavior right hey you, uh, a guy my friend got shot i thought it was you i shot you i didn't shoot your friend well fuck you anyway what right. that's not how the world works but the friend i mean your guy yeah your middle guy also he could do the same thing this is there's no understanding from him he should just go well this guy and this is that's my true. buddhist thing that's he could true. just go well this man is suffering and is taking it out on me and right i'm just going to let it be and this is not my problem, and, and don't throw the lemonade, and don't say, fuck you. No, so he could have right. done, too. Well, this guy misheard me, and, uh, well, that's yeah. the way. There's not a lot of uh, compassion. We need more compassion right. and uh, more things of, like, well, that's, that guy is... All this stuff is just people. These people are suffering in their own lives and in their own way. I like that saying, everyone you meet is, is, is battling their own battle that you're completely unaware of, so be nice. That's true. That's it's a true. good lesson. Try to I be agree. kind. But I just don't like when these guys get away with it. That's I know. Because then... I mean, not this guy didn't learn a lesson, obviously, so it doesn't help anyway. But right. you know, the the guy on the street, the N word guy with the tickets, he should be punished. This guy with the finger should be punished. You know. Yeah. Well, they're just assholes. The problem is no one learns from the punishment. Then you got to look within. That's it. You got to go. Shit, maybe I am fucked up. Yeah. But no one's doing that. Indeed. Well, some people are. Some people, but yeah, we're uh, trying. But th that's the thing. Like the people who do do that, they move to these neighborhoods with the rest of the sane people. And then people get mad. Hey, that group's doing very well. Well, they're they're all thinking and progressing and trying to be better people. Yeah, but they're doing better than me. Fuck them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, now, now we're back at square one. Right. There's a lot of uh, jealousy. I, I was reading this in one of my Thich Nhat Hanh books. Uh -huh. Well, what happens a lot is that uh, people cause you to suffer. Maybe they say, uh, you know, you're getting a fight with your girlfriend and she's like, fuck you. And uh, people's natural thing, for some reason is to go, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. Of course. But it does, it's swallowing your own poison. It doesn't actually make you feel better. It mm. makes you feel worse. It doesn't relieve anything. Yeah. But a way to make yourself feel better is to say, well, maybe they're uh, hurting. Because what happens is then they go, well, I'm going to hurt you back. Right. And it just progresses. And that's right. why we have all these fights and wars and divorces. People get hurt, and instead of going, well, why did you hurt me? Yeah. Now I just sound like a big uh, no, I sound I, like a Buddhist. Really. I agree with that but I think there's also, the part you're leaving out is the fear of being a pushover. Nobody wants to be a pushover. I deal with that my whole life. I feel right. like that all the time. I, people are like, my girlfriend will even say, she's like, you gotta get, you gotta stand up for these people. I'm like, well, I don't wanna be, I don't like conflict. Right, I don't either, but and then one time I rant about guns, and I got to take it all on for three days. People right. were calling me a fucking faggot and right. saying I should eat a shotgun, but my mouth was too small. It hurt my feelings. <laughs> That's not a bad line. That <laughs> was pretty good. Pretty good. Single That's barrel for Joe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think it's just, I think just some people get it and some people don't, and the people who get it are mad that everybody else is a fucking lunatic, and the people who don't get it are mad because their shit's not going their way. Right. Well, the lesson here is we should all try to be kinder and more compassionate and more understanding. I, I agree. And fuck that. If you're not feeling it, fake it. Fake it. Fake it. You you putting your shitty mood and attitude on other people, that's that's incredibly selfish and, and inconsiderate. Fake it until you make it. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
I don't even know where to go from here. We got all serious. This is two weeks in a row. We got we got serious. Well, the the vegetarian thing was pretty funny. That was fun. See, I don't have that gene. Which gene? The gene of some shitty, terrible thing happened to you. I'm gonna laugh in your face. I don't have that. I'm like, I my first instinct to be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. That's insane. What a crazy uh, happened stance of events. Jesus Christ. I feel the same way. I'd like to make when people fall. I'm like, let's make sure these people are all right. I'm the same. And then I'm, later we'll laugh about slapstick it. Slapstick does nothing for me. Yeah, it seems horrible. I don't get it. I, I hate the Three Stooges. I'm going on another limb. Oh, I hate them too. Oh Where man. Boy. But I do love Buster Keaton though. I love Buster Keaton. You know why? He took it on himself. Uh huh. Yeah, I, the Three Stooges never did it for me. I uh, like that's, jokes. That's I why like I like the Marx Brothers. I want, I want jokes. Yeah, the three, that's so simpleton whoop, shit. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the sounds. Yeah, as I did that, I was like, that was pretty fun. Yeah, but the frying pan in the face, you know, right. come on. This episode is brought to you by Square Space. Drag and drop. Uh, easy to lump load, easy to <laughs> fix, easy to start. Get on there, it's cheap. You got you crazy nowadays if you don't have a website. What are you? This is 2011. Get in there, people. <laughs> Come on. You got to have one and get that website before your domain your domain name gets taken. Yeah, it's going to get taken. There's a bunch of weirdos out there just typing in, seeing what's left, and they're going to take it. <laughs> and then when you want it, they're going to charge you a hand and a foot. I'll tell you who won't charge you. Squarespace.com forward slash tooth. I mean, they will charge you, they but not that much. Bit, yeah. <laughs> Slightly charged. <laughs> forward slash Tuesdays. Type in Tuesdays. As your promo code, you get a nice, fat, juicy discount. Woo. And uh, our website is on Squarespace, so use squarespace.com. And I uh, guess you have a website. Set up a website just to call us uh, fucking idiots and whatever you want to do. Oh, that's a great idea. An Anti-Tuesdays website. Oh. That's when you've arrived. Oh, it's coming, baby. Oh, I can't wait. It's coming after all this race stuff. And uh, Well, how about, you got something uplifting over there? I got something uplifting. Oh, I'm going to lift it up. I went over, first of all, I've been hanging out with uh, Greg Warren a lot. Great We've got to get him back on the podcast. Great he was on guy. once. He's Sweetheart. a great guy. He's 78 years old, this guy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Beautiful eyes. Uh, Greg Warren was a all-American wrestler. Yeah. At the uh, University of Kansas, or Kansas University, I should say. Went to Army for a year, West Point. I found wow. that out because uh, I invited him to go to an Army football game here in West Point, which is about an hour and 15 minutes north of uh, New York City. Yeah. And a beautiful campus. Beautiful, Highly beautiful. recommend going up there for a football game. Sports Illustrated ranked it top five sports venues in America. <whistles> it's, uh, it's on the banks of the Hudson River, and there's a little lake right next to the stadium. Especially peak foliage in the fall. Ah. It's, it's spectacular up there. Uh huh. And so we went to the game. It was Army versus Buffalo, University of Buffalo. Second year in a row, I've gone to see the University of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. I saw them play Ohio State last year, mm -hmm. and uh, they got killed both times. And I said, Greg Warren, I'm like, I I'm looking. Uh, this is a long shot. Do you want to go to this game? And he's like, Do I? He went to Army for a year. Wow. And very few people leave after a year. He decided he wanted to be a comedian and wanted to right. you know, get laid. It's, a, it's brutal what these guys go through. I bet. I mean, it's just the, the uh, what do you call that when people, older people beat on you? Boot camp? No, well, that too. But Discipline? Uh, it's close to discipline. Ugh. Hazing. Oh, hazing. Ha all the hazing and the crazy. You have to eat a meal as a, as a plebe. That's uh -huh. a freshman. That doesn't sound so bad. Yeah, it's not so bad. I like a meal. You got to sit there with your with with your hands on your thighs, uh -huh. and then you can move up. You can cut one piece of meat, put your hands back down, wow. pick it up, and chew one piece at a time. Wow. And there's people watching you and quizzing you. They're like, "Who was the third president? Who was the fourth president of West Point?" If you get it wrong, you get you know beaten and raped or whatever. The wow. Fuck. Well, this beats uh, jizzing on a cracker. It's pretty wild up there. No, but that's really mentally fucked up. Yeah, and and to get in is so hard, and the and right. the student stuff and the PTing and uh, it's crazy. Then if you quit, you feel like a puss. Right. Well, half the people quit like in the first couple of weeks. Wow. People are like, fuck you. And uh, then they chant like your friend just, it, oh, this is a funny one. So people start leaving and you're, you're marching every day. Yeah. You're the guy that goes left, right, right, left, right, that guy. And uh, I guess he was doing, uh, he's like left, left. Your best friend just left. <laughs> How fun is that? As That's you're marching and, the, and your buddy's walking out with a suitcase, and yeah. you're just losing friends. Right, right. And so wow. uh, he said it was wild, but he got through the first year because Greg's like a tough guy a tough and was on the wrestling team. He is. And then he decided he got an honorary uh, discharge. I hope he doesn't mind that I'm talking about this. But he got an honorary discharge because he was like, I'm going to go wrestle here and I want to go to college and I want to be a comedian. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was you know, it was an honorary. It's a, it's a tough life. And then you're also committed to six more years in the Army. I really should have asked if he's all right with. That. I'm sure he is though. I'm right? sure he's fine. 
So you, it's a commitment to like six more years in the Army, and then you're 40 by the time you get out. Wow. So then he went to, he went to Kansas, and it became a, a, an All-American wrestler in the country. Unbelievable. Amazing. But anyway, so he says yes. We go up to the, the game. Just a great day. Yeah. Super. It was fucking 150 degrees. We walked all around the stadium, and the, the, the people, they parachute into the stadium. You ever oh, see that? Oh, no. You look up, and there's seven guys just floating around, and they deadly accurate. They land at center field, the middle center field. 50 yard line. Wow. These guys, they jump out of planes, they just control it. Wow, wait, it's is insane. Are they the players? Not the players. Oh, I mean, that would be insane. That'd be pretty cool. But I'm sure the players have that skill. These sure. guys are unbelievable. Wow. They're playing Division One football, and I mean, those are men. Oh, yeah. That is some men shit. And you know what? I bet there's no real racism there because everyone is just all fucked up, beat to shit, you know, disciplined, and you're all there. Everybody's in line. Right, right. No, it's like what you said. No one's an asshole there. They're all you can't the same. Be. Yeah. So, anyways, we went to the game. That was that was just a great, great game, great day. Yeah. And uh, Greg had all these great stories. We got to have him back on. I ah, love that I, guy. I love that guy too. He's a he's a mensch. He's a, spending a bunch of time and just and hilarious. A lot of stories. Great comedian. Uh, check him out if you don't already know him, Greg Warren. Um, but anyways, then we went to the U.S. Open. Have you ever gone to the U.S. Open? No. We got to go next year. Oh yeah, it's spectacular! I never it's think so much fun. I never sit here tennis match and go. I got to be there. Oh god, it's great! Really, it's one of the great American sporting events, and it's quintessentially New York. Yeah, it's Queens. a great New York event. So we go out there, and uh, it's like a festival. Uh -huh. You can get tickets just to the grounds. There's water fountains and food and beer tents. There's hot fucking broads uh, everywhere. I bet, I bet. It's unbelievable. It's like all these, you know, it's mostly rich white people. Like the ads are like the sponsors are Mercedes Benz. Sure. And Moet or Moe. Moet. Aha. Uh -huh. The Moet and Alize keep me busy. Yeah. Girls used to diss me. Uh huh. But now they write letters because they miss me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Natalie Imbruglia? No, I believe that's uh, the Notorious B.I.G. Oh, he's good. Mm -hmm. The best ever, from what I understand. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we go there, and uh, you can walk the junior tennis matches. You can walk right up to them. Wow. You can just sit there and watch this girl play. And i got to tell you something. Don't let my girlfriend hear this. Oh, boy. Juniors is under 18. Oh. Some of these girls, they got 17-year-old bodies with the little skirts, oh, and they're sweating. Oh, jeez. I mean... That's a that's a dream. In, I'm eight feet away, and she's like, "Ugh!" And Greg is like, a, "He's a he's a proper gentleman. He's a gentleman." And I'm like, "Oh my god, this girl!" And he's like, "Oh come on, Joe, you're just goofing around, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I just love tennis. Let's sit yeah, here, and yeah. watch this match for two hours. Right, right. I have a boner in my cargo shorts. <laughs> yeah, you're eating a, an ice cream, just carving a divot out of it with your tongue. It's insane. He's like, "All right, let's move on." I'm like, I gotta watch this match. I know this girl." But yeah. these skirts, they're just hot. Hot, those legs, those skirts. The legs and the skirts. I love the ponytail flapping in the wind. And the, ugh, after oh, every hit. Yeah. It was great. But then we go into the uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is a great venue, and we're watching the, the women's semifinal. We're there late in the tournament. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. And we got to see the match. A lot of you probably watched it. Uh, K. Nishikori, Kori, oh yeah, from J Japan, first Japanese player since 1918 to go to the uh, final. Wow, we watched him, and he went against Stan Warinki from uh, Sweden. Is that a guy? Yeah. Okay. Men versus men, women versus women, and uh, the the match we watched four hours and 15 minutes. Good lord. We watched every second, and we were just enthralled. Yeah. We got these gray seats. We were at center court. And we sat there for four hours and 15 minutes. What's amazing about the sport is you're not allowed to talk while they're competing. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's basically just whispering. During, so it's like a meditative experience. Wow. It's you and 10,000 people, and you can hear a pin drop. And just, thump, ah, thump, thump. Wow. And it goes back and forth. And this match was incredible, Mark. It was up and down. It's the best sporting event I've ever been to. Holy shit. Up and down, back and forth. And the mental, it's similar to comedy almost. Uh -huh. but, I mean, nothing alike. Well, it's all timing. Yeah, it's timing and, and it, just that mental thing of you're thinking of the next move. Yeah. And you've got to stay in there. You lose three in a row. It's like bombing. You've got to stay wow. strong. The, the mental strength and, and dedication that goes into this sport is incredible. You're just out there with 18,000 people watching. Wow. For four hours, it's 80 degrees. Boy, I, I feel like after this, we should, I'm getting worked up. We should go play ping pong. I'll go play ping pong. I love ping pong. You know, Judah Friedland is one of the best in the world. Well, that's his bit, probably. No, he really is. Oh, he's, like a, oh. he's incredible. Uh, Greg Warren took him pl to play ping pong against this kid he went to college with. Uh -huh. who was like a ping pong but champ. Yeah. And Friedland wiped the floor with him. Well, it's hard to know what, when he is the best in the world because he says he's the best in the world everything. That's true. But I hear you. Uh, uh, 
Wow, this sounds amazing. And yeah, we got to go to the early rounds next time because it, it's really just a hang and you go for the day. It feels yeah. like the Montreal Comedy Festival. Wow. People are just walking around and there's drinks over there. There's a tent over there. And yeah. there's just matches everywhere. Two questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, what time of day is it? When did you get there? Like one? We went, uh, we went at, it starts at 11 a.m., but uh-huh. we, went, we got there at like 1230. We were okay. there. Warren almost missed his spot because the match was so long. Wow. It's rare that a match is four hours sure. long. So, uh, yeah, we were there from, like, 1 to 8, maybe. 8? It was a long match. And what neighborhood is it? It's in Flushing. Oh, it's in Flushing. It's right across the street from Shea State. It's a beautiful, beautiful wow. setting, and uh, it's just dynamite, and there's just hot girls everywhere, and these fun people, and people are drinking, and... And you, did you, he drove, or you took... No, the... we took the 7 train. Wow. Lovely. And uh, I got, we got to go next year. I want to go to a few days. Yeah, next yeah. Year. It's fun. I, and I want to go when it's nighttime. Under the lights would take on a whole different Ooh. kind of atmosphere. How'd you get tickets? You just buy tickets. It was like 50 bucks. Wow. You're living, baby. Oh, I'm living. I'm at the Army game. I'm at the tennis match. You're I'm at, at the Apollo's place. Oh, yeah. We're living, baby. You're all, that's why I, I've said it before, but you know, I drank all weekend. I didn't see shit in, in Indianapolis. I barely I made myself go out in Chicago, but... It's the booze. You wake up, you're hungover, you're like, oh, I'm staying in. Oh, you, you're sober as a judge. You're getting up with the roosters. I'm lo- I lost so many days to, to hangovers and drinking. Right, right. You lose the day. You get up at 2, and you're like, I don't feel like doing anything. Then it's over, yeah. Then you got shows at night, so you're like, ah, I'll wait it out. I try to do. I'm a doer. Can I say this about, uh, I was intrigued by the uh, left, left, your best friend left. Right. There's a million things like that in life, you know, like... Uh, I can't think of another one right now, but there's a million little jokes like that in mm-hmm. every company or every facet of whatever. No one gets credit, the guy who thinks of those. Right, those right. Are, those are put a smile on your face. They brighten your day. You're like, oh, yeah, that's great. But no one – who is the guy? Well, they brighten our day. They sadden their day. But, well, but they're not yeah, all Yeah, there's a sad. million things there's, like that. There's a million. I can't think – why can't I think of one right now? Fuck. You know, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean, that's a bad one. That's a bad example. But some dude thought of that. Yeah, oh, I agree. You know? I agree. Street uh, jokes are like that. Yeah, they're very clever and creative, and, and we just, they go away and just the with a fart in the wind. I heard this joke. Uh, you ever watch Hard Knocks on HBO? Yeah. The football show? Great show. It's terrific. Uh, Matt Ryan told this joke. I apologize if you already heard it. Uh, I'll tell it quick. So this old man, he's sitting on the, the front porch of his house, and these kids walk by with a bunch of chicken wire. Mm-hmm. And uh, he goes, where are you guys going? Uh, where, where are you all going? And they go, we're going to go catch some chickens. And he's like, hey, you can't really catch chickens with chicken wire. And they're like, well, whatever. And they leave, and they come back like three hours later. They got all these chickens wrapped in chicken wire. And the guy's like, holy hell, that's crazy. It's like a week later, they walk by with a bunch of duct tape. And he's like, where are you all going with that duct tape? And they go, we're going to catch ducks. And he goes, well, you can't catch ducks with duct tape. They're like, well, whatever. They come back a few hours later with all these ducks wrapped in duct tape. And the next day, they walk by with a bunch of pussy willows. And the old man goes, let me get my hat. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, That's a great joke. Who wrote that joke? Somebody wrote it. That is a beautiful joke. I know. Just the little things. Like when somebody goes, is that clear? Crystal. I love that. Oh, yeah. Just the little things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nervous in the service. You know, somebody thought of these. How about uh, Purvis Ellison? He was a basketball player, high traffic for the Boston Celtics. He was always hurt. And this guy called him Nervous Purvis out of service. There it is. How about this one? This is my favorite one slash story. Best sports heckle of all time. I'll stand by it and pardon the language. I'm at a Red Sox-Indians game. This is back in the 90s when Manny Ramirez still played for the Indians before he came to Boston. Mm. I'm there with my dad. Manny's at the dish. And uh, somebody wrote dish for plate. That's there you funny. go. The guy standing right next to me. I'm like 12 years old. The guy goes, hey, Manny, you taking up the fanny, you faggot. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that Straight, guy? Straight, simple, to the point. I mean, that's a that's a bad word or whatever. Using fanny, fanny, sexually is gold. Is classic. I've never heard it before in my life. I love it. My grandmother used fanny. Only person I ever heard use fanny. He used it to get fucked in the fanny and then tagged it with "you faggot." <laughs> if that's not the most quintessentially Boston right sports, that's great. I love when people use a, a light word harshly. Mm-hmm. Uh, one time, I. Uh, I was in Boy Scouts, and I fucked something up, and my scoutmaster was so mad, he goes, you fucking nincompoop, <laughs> and the whole place lost it, because it's like this little childish 50s word, but he it hurts so bad. Right, right. I like fucking up, the tent fell and everything, and he's like, oh, you nincompoop. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, what a great line. Oh, that's fun. Not that I condone faggot. No, 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 no. But Never like, in my administration have I condone the F word. But you know, you watch Tough Crowd with all these, like, Geraldo, DePaulo, Patrice, it's like these alpha males, and they're all calling each other dummies. Right. I love that. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, you yeah. dummy! It's like I guess it's a Rickles uh, homage. Yeah, it's it, whatever it is. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, some guy thought of those and he gets no credit, and that's it. That's a bummer. I mentioned my grandmother saying Fanny. Here's a, I'm, I'm going to bring it down again. We're up. We're down. We're, we're all over the down, place, baby. We're my, a roller coaster. My grandmother died. Sorry, 89 <laughs> years oh. old. And uh, listen to this. Wait, this wait is, seriously? Yeah, she died like a week ago. Oh, jeez, I had no idea. Yes, I missed the funeral because I had gigs, and my dad was like, don't worry if you can't be there, boo boo boo. Uh-huh. Which I felt bad about. But it's one of those things, these funerals, they, they pop right up. And oh, yeah. then, uh, you know, I got $300 with the spots, and it's $100 to drive there and back. So it's a $400 swing. I, I, I need money. Hey, you didn't want to be late. And uh, here's the thing. My grandmother, she wouldn't want to wake anyway. She's one of these people. She's like, I don't want anyone looking at me. Get out of here. Yeah, my mom's like that. And the funeral, she doesn't know what's happening. So what could, I felt bad that I missed it. But uh, she was 89. Here's how she died. My grandfather died like two years ago. So she had a good life. She lived her whole life, and her husband had been dead anyway, so she's yeah. lonely. She dies. She still reads the paper. She's going to get the paper, uh-huh. falls down the front steps, Smashes her fucking head open. Oh my god! Don't you want? Can't you go out with a little, in, a little? Uh, what? Not integrity. That's not the word. But a little, just die in your sleep. She smashed her fucking head open. Yeah. And then she's like fucking all fucked up in the head for like a week. Oh. She never came back. She was just didn't know where she was. She's on the tubes or whatever. Doesn't wow. it suck that you live this full life? Yeah. Nine decades. Right. And you die because you slip getting the paper. Right. And just fucking land on your face. That's how life ends. Just. <laughs> That's insane. And your head's, her brain's just bleeding. I mean, it's not going to stop bleeding. She's eighty nine years old. It's all that. It's all that flimsy. I mean, look at Artie Fuqua. The guy's in a uh, uh, done a gig and he's on the highway and some guy falls asleep and plows into him and that's it. It's just that. Be grateful, everybody. Be grateful. We're, we're still alive. Watch your step for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, don't read the paper. Ugh, get an iPad, you weirdo. Don't read the papers. Read the papers. My uh, my grandmother. This is how old school she was. She lived in Slidell, Louisiana, which is a way out. Sticks. Slidell. Yeah. And uh, they had a fire pit. That's how they got rid of their trash. They had no garbage man. Oh, wow. So they would just burn everything. A garbage fire. Yes. And uh, she was burning something, and somehow, I think she she threw a, 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 what do you call those things, a fire extinguisher in there. Oh, boy. Very ironic. The thing blows up, and, uh, char- you know, it's like a that red, hard, whatever that is, porcelain. I don't know what those are made of. I think of. it's metal. It's going to be steel. Is it? I think it's like a... Can't be porcelain. Like That's a, ridiculous. Like concrete or something. I think it might be metal. All right, well, I don't know. Google. All right. Uh, Call in. Yeah, Google fire hydrant or fire extinguisher if you don't mind there. And uh, a piece just th- flew at her, ripped her arm to pieces, just ch- took a chunk out of her arm. It's a grenade. It's shrapnel. Yeah. So then they had to do all these surgeries. They took parts like of her ass to put on her arms. And now, she's, oh, now her arm's farting, you know, <laughs> all this shit. And uh, then it was just a slow decline after that because it took so much out of her. And that wow. was it. That's crazy. It's crazy. You just live yeah. your whole life and think about us living right here. And then someday, I mean, we could just get hit by a car. I'm about to drive to Boston. Who knows? Right. But then just our li- your whole life ends because you're slipped on a fucking banana peel. That shit's going to happen to me, too, because I'm, I'm dumb. Like, I was waiting for the train. I was with Sam Marill, and I'm standing like an inch away from the train. He goes, what are you doing? I was like, well, the train's not going to hit me. The train goes right here. He's like, just back up. There's no point in you standing there. Yeah, risk like, reward. You got a point. You're going to die jumping down train steps. You've, I've watched you jump from eight steps up. I like to jump. I saw a guy, man. This is fucking crazy. I was running for the train. Or I wasn't running for the train. He was running for the train. Big, fat, nerd guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, this is one of those things where you wait to find out they're not injured, and then you're like, that was hilarious. Right. But he's just like a big, fat goof. And uh, he's running for the train, and he tries to jump the last four steps. I think I might have talked about this before. Uh-oh. He jumps from four steps and just clips his heel on the bottom step. Oh. And he hits the thing like... Like, I mean, he just goes oh, down no. like, a, like a ton of freight. He just fucking yeah. bang. And uh, it was fucking crazy. And I was like, are you all right? And he's like, oh, fuck you. Like, he was like, mad at me. Yeah, something. yeah. And I just walked away. I was like, that was classic. Wow. What a fucking lunatic. I mean, I have tremendous uh, empathy or whatever, sympathy. Maybe it's sympathy. If I see, like, a fat kid fall and bust his ass and start weeping, I I, I, I can't go on with my day. Yeah, like, you it, feel bad. It uh, kills me. Look, if I see a skinny kid fall, I'm like, ah, but like a fat kid who doesn't know how to, like, play properly. Right. Uh, you know, he's like, he's like, I should have been playing video games the whole time, motherfuckers, you know? I do feel, I am grateful. I've never had any weight issues. It, it's a good oh, thing to have. Yeah, it makes them. me feel good to not. Yeah. It would, that would suck. Do you, do you feel bad about fats, fat people? Like, do you feel like, hey, buddy, what are you doing? 
lose the weight. Stop. Put the cheeseburger down. Well, again, it's uh, th- but you that, never know when it's. Gr- uh, I don't know whatever. what it is. You know, it's high, and it's hard to quit things. Sure. I mean, people probably said that about me. I'm shitting in shoes. People right. are like, why don't you just stop drinking? You fucking idiot. You're shitting in shoes. That's not how yeah. I behave. And I'm like, I can't. Woo. Right. So eating. I mean, people eat to hide their feelings. People have different things. I mean, gambling is an addiction. I never understand. That's crazy to me to just be losing oh, money. That's wild. Yeah. I lose twenty bucks. I'm like, well, that's a wrap. I gotta go. That was I, two Chipotle's I just lost. I'm the same way. So uh, different. Uh, I guess things, so. You know. I mean. And it's a cycle. I think they eat because they feel bad about eating. Right. But there's a lot of people. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of times you're like, you got to get it together. Yeah. I mean, some people that are like, you know, wicked fat. You're like, you're gonna die. You got to right. figure this out. Cigarettes, I feel the same way. I yes, never smoke. Yes. I'm like, I know it's hard and I know it sucks, but I'm like, you got to figure this out. I mean, you're going to die. Yeah. That is fucking horrible. That's on you. Get it together. Right, uh, right. It's That's... hard to quit, but it's hard to do a lot of things. you got to do it. Right. Do we have a, a ruling on the fire extinguisher? Uh, aluminum. 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 You yeah. were right. That's you're what right. I thought, aluminum. Aluminium. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow, why do I think they were concrete? They're so heavy. I thought they were concrete. I don't know. You ever use a fire extinguisher? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. It must be fun. Well, I got to tell you, you should try to use one because when you're in the thick of it, uh-huh. they're kind of complicated. Right. So it's a weird thing that we don't teach this. Similar to guns. Yeah, that's right. You have right. a gun to protect yourself, and then, but then you're like, well, you have kids. You gotta be, well, I keep it unloaded, and I keep it locked. And you're like, well, that's not very... Fuck. Right. You hear a break, and you're like, ah, shit, I gotta put shit together. Ah! It's true. And at least fire has ex- ex- instructions. Right. But you feel like an idiot because your your daughter's on fire, and you're like, oh, hang on, number right. one, peel right. back label. It's it's so stupid. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. Well, I think we gotta wrap it up here. Another gotta, another gotta hot episode. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel bad for not thinking of more, you know, fun sayings, because there's a million out there. I know. We'll think of it. As soon as we leave, we'll think I, of them. I know. We'll They're probably all... use four of them and be like, ah, oh, those would have been good. They're all gonna hit me, yeah. We got to come up with a name for those sayings. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ninkum poops. There you go. Well, well, you didn't seem very on board with that one. Well, that's one of them. You can't use one of them as the name. No, but ninkum poops not one of them, is it? No, I guess it's not. I guess but... someone came up with ninkum poop though. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's All good. this stuff came up. I don't understand. I mean, this could go off in a whole like like we're eating mushrooms, but like, who invented chalk? Why is chalk a word? Why is headphone? How does headphones work? I don't right. understand anything. Well, that all comes from the Romance language, not a Latin, a lot of Latin. I know, but how is a rug a thing? How are we just not falling off the earth? I don't understand any of it. Well, we could we could do a we could be here all night. You know what Albert Einstein said, and I would live by this. Uh huh. There's two ways to look at life: as though nothing is a miracle, or as though everything is a miracle. Oh, I like to choose the latter. I like that. And that's what I call God. I don't believe in God, but I'm like, we're all standing here. We're not falling out of our seats. Somehow right. we're rotating around. We can breathe. I can see you. Yeah. We're friends. It all worked the out. The whole thing is all very exciting and happy and yeah. gay. That's, I'll call that God. You want me to say God? That's what God is. All of this kit and caboodle without us. How are we here? I don't understand it. It seems I, miraculous to me. I'm with you. Why, why should we give some old guy in the clouds credit? There's no guy. There's no guy. We, we're doing this. this is, yeah. let, let us enjoy it. Yeah, it's wild. We met somehow. Indeed. The stars aligned. God aligned the stars. God aligned. I don't know who aligned anything. Boy. I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I believe in Allah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes our one Muslim fan. Actually, uh, we might have lost him earlier with the India thing. Uh, but I live with an Indian, so I'm good. I fucked one once. Have you? Yeah. How'd she smell? You don't want to know. <laughs> All right, well, that's a wrap, folks. That's not a good way to... We did the whole thing about ending racism. She was great, lovely. Ended, yeah. But hey, I'm not saying all Indians are lovely, you see? I love Indian. I love my Indian roommate, and I love Nimesh, and I love a few other... Oh, Pranav. I used to work with him at Sears. I like Aparna Nanshala. I love Aparna. Yeah. She's great. She's fucking hilarious. Funny gal. Every Indian... Suba. Every Indian I've ever met, I like. <laughs> Hari Kondabolu, I'm on the fence. I like... <laughs> <laughs> ah, seems like a nice kid, but... Take it down a peg. <laughs> oh, boy. Every Indian I've ever... That's a good culture. All the Indians I've met, I've liked. They're Although hard I've, working. I've had a couple of, you know, run-ins at, uh, you know, bodegas where they're like, it's $5, and they yell at me. But right, they've right. been abused by white fucking assholes. Right, right. But not all white people are assholes. Indian... But a lot of these college white guys, when they get that's drunk, true. they abuse these t- cab oh, drivers. Real quick, I got to say, I was, on, time. I was on a... No, no, no take. I was on a show last night, and this guy was bombing. He goes, you fucking white people are all the worst. It's like, you're bombing! What is this white people oh, thing? I God. can't stand it. He's like, that black guy back there gets it, and it's a white comic. Oh, and the black geez. guy's like, oh, shit. Oh, I felt geez. so embarrassed. We just... 
Can we do that now? We're just blaming a race for not having good jokes? All right. I bummed it, LOL. Boy, all you Asian, Indian, gay, exactly. Puerto Rican, and white guy are the same. Right. He's like, you're all stuffy. And then the next guy went up and killed. It was ah, so annoying. Don't you love that feeling when you're that guy, though? Oh, I love Six it. Six people bomb and then you kill? I, I even referenced him bombing and made fun of him. I was oh. like, fuck this guy. There's no better feeling than when five comics in a row go, you guys have been a mediocre audience. Well, you guys have been here. Yeah. You guys are the best audience in the room. And I go up like this, you guys are great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that feeling. You guys are fair and intelligent. Yeah, you're nice people, and I'm glad you laughed at all of my jokes. Right. Sorry about these other assholes. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then, you, then you go into a green room and sit with all of them for a few hours. But anyways, we got to wrap it up. Uh, email us at email. Tuesdays with Stories at Gmail. I love the emails. They're so kind. Yeah, and, and tweet uh, at us and retweet us. And yes. Send, come to our live shows. We got, we got calendars on our website. You, we're coming to a town near you, folks. And if we're not coming to a town, hit us up. We'll come to your town. Yes. For the right price. Yeah, bring us out. We'll do anything. We, we need money and we need fans and we need love. We just booked two shows, one in Philly, one in D.C., back-to-back from just fans emailing saying, hey, I'll give you this amount, and we're going there together. So uh, There you go. We'd like to do more of that because God knows the uh, industry is not booking me for God's sakes. And I'm we, kidding there. We don't have management in this in this podcast world, so it's all us. You're talking right to the to the helm, no baby. filter. So yes. you can email us and uh, and uh, be kind to each other for God's sakes. Let's make it. Let's. It starts with you. Yes. And look within and and be kind. And rewind. Yes. Make sure you rewind your videotapes. Yeah. All right. We love you.